Mirize is a very useful SMTP gateway for small networks, home networks, and also labs. But even in networks like this, we shouldn't get complacent and allow anybody access to computers or allow unencrypted traffic either, especially when it contains sensitive information. Now, Mirize does support authentication, so you can restrict access to it. And it also supports TLS, so you can encrypt the traffic. But how do you configure Mailrise to support authentication and TLS? Well, if that's something that you're interested in finding out, then stick around and watch this video, as that's what we'll be going over. Now, because this video is specifically about configuring user authentication and TLS for Mailrise, I'm going to have to make some assumptions. Firstly, you've already installed Mailrise, or at least you know how to do that. If not, then I do have another video which shows you how to install Mailrise in a Docker container. Secondly, that you have a private key and a TLS certificate available for Mailrise, or at least you know how to create them. The reason being is this varies a lot depending on which certificate authority you use, and I can't really cover all possibilities. However, I do have a video available that shows how to create a certificate authority using OpenSSL and how to create certificates for servers if that's of interest to you. Lastly, if you're using your own certificate authority, you have to assume you know how to configure your servers to trust the certificates that get signed. This is going to vary a lot depending on the application you use to send emails or maybe even the operating system. As an example though, I'll be showing how to update the root certificate store on a Linux computer. Now, Mailrise does support authentication, but it's expected that you're going to be using TLS to encrypt everything. And that does make a lot of sense because you don't want sensitive details like a username and password being used during the actual login process to be exchanged over the network in clear text. Now, to actually be able to use TLS, you're going to need a private key and an actual certificate file that Mailrise can use. And how you actually get those really depends on your circumstances. Now, in my case, I'm using OpenSSL. So I've created the actual key file and the certificate on the actual root CA. And just to save a bit of time, I've already uploaded them to this computer. So if I actually have a look in this folder that I've got called certs, you'll see there are two files. One's CRT file, so that's the certificate, and the other is a key file, which is the actual private key. One thing I'm going to point out, though, is that the permissions are set so that everyone or other have got read access. Now, normally that's really not a good idea for a private key. You don't want anybody to be able to get access to your private key. The only problem is if you don't set that, well, the actual container won't be able to use it and it won't be able to start when we configure it. So in which case, I'm leaving it as read only. Having said that, I do need to actually copy it across to where I'm storing my actual Mailrise information because I'm running a container here and I like to keep everything in its place. So I've got a, an, an actual folder set aside for each individual container. So for Mailrise, I've got one called Mailrise. So we're just going to copy those two files across to the Mailrise folder. And if we have a look in there, we've now got three files, one of which is the configuration file. And because I'm using Docker Compose, what I need to do next is to actually edit the YAML file for that and actually tell it where to find the actual files. And more specifically, I just need to map those two uh, files across to the container so that I can actually use them. So what I've got here is one line, which is mapping the certificate file, the other, which is mapping the actual key. Now, dot slash mail rise is referring to the actual present working directory. That's the directory we're running uh, Docker from. And then I'm using that to basically point out where the actual real file is. And then I've got slash Etsy slash SSL. So this is the actual folder from the containers perspective. So when the actual container is running, I'll tell it that it's going to find a certificate in slash Etsy slash SSL, but it'll be really pointing back to this actual file in dot slash mail rise. Anyway, now we've got the volumes updated. I need to save that file. And then we need to actually edit the configuration for mail rise itself. So I'm going to go to the end of the file, and copy and paste in the details. 
So the first thing we've got is a section for TLS. You've got a mode of start TLS because that's what we're actually using. It basically allows a computer to connect to the server and ask it if it supports start TLS. If it does, then they can start a conversation and they can start encrypting the traffic. I need to tell it where to find the certificate file and where to uh, actually find the key file. Again, this is all from the perspective of the actual container. So it's going to be looking in this slash Etsy slash SSL folder for these. Then we've got an SMTP section because that's what Mailrise is. It's an SMTP gateway. We're going to be sending emails to uh, Mailrise, but it's then going to send them off uh, as alerts, in my case, to Slack. But we've got to set up the authentication details. So it's using basic authentication. And what I've got here is the username and the actual password that we're going to be using for that. Now, I'm just doing a demo here, so I'm keeping things as simple as possible, but I would really recommend using something a lot less obvious uh, than that username and a lot more complicated and stronger than this actual password. But now that we've done that, we'll save that file. Then what we're going to do is to, well, we need to actually restart the container, but I find it's a bit better to actually just stop the actual container and then we'll actually start it back up again. Again, I'm using Compose, so I'll be running Docker Compose up and then I've got the dash D option to basically do this all in the background. And what it's going to do is it's going to go through that Docker Compose file and essentially start up any container that isn't already started. So hit return. And as you can see, it's going through the process of just um, starting up the Mailrise one. All the other ones were already running, so it didn't have to touch those. But what I do want to double check is that this is actually working. I don't want the container to be having any problems. And if I use Docker PS A, for instance, you can see right at the top here, it's mentioning Mailrise uh, as my container. And that looks okay. I mean, it's, it's up and running. It's not in a state of restarting. So we should be good to go. Now, in order to trust a certificate, an application needs to actually trust the root certificate authority that signed it. Now, if you've actually got your certificate from a public certificate authority, then chances are you can just skip this section because your computer will already trust that. But if you're actually using your own certificate authority, you're going to have to actually configure the application or operating system to trust your root certificate authority. Now, how you do that really varies, but in the case of this computer here, which is running Linux, what I need to do is to actually update the root certificate store to get it to trust my root CA, which was set up using OpenSSL. So the first thing I'm going to do is to actually create a folder in slash user slash share slash CA dash certificates. And that's going to be called extra. And let's give it my password. Then what I need to do is to edit the configuration file which is slash Etsy slash ca-certificates.conf to tell it about my actual certificate. So you can see there's all these ones that are in a Mozilla folder, but I want to scroll right to the end here, paste in a new line and tell it about my own root certificate server. Save that configuration file. Then the next thing I need to do is to actually get my root certificate file into that actual folder. But what I'm going to do is to actually just create a file using nano here. So it's called root-ca.crt, which is what we re uh, referenced in the configuration file. And then I'm just going to copy and paste in my actual certificate. Save that. And then what I need to do is to actually make an update. So I'll just paste in the command here, update-ca-certificates. Off it goes, it's done its update and it said it's added one actual uh, certificate. So really there's a, an actual certificate file in the actual operating system, which is basically all of the actual certificates that are stored in that root store. It's just basically just added it to that actual file. But what this does is it means that any application that trusts or uses the root certificate store should now trust the actual root certificate authority that I've got and any actual certificates that it's signed. Now with Mailrise up and running, you'll probably test this from an application to make sure that your email service is working. But for me, 
I've got just a basic Linux computer here, which doesn't have an actual email client configured. So instead, what I'm going to use is the cut command. First thing I need to do, though, is to create a text file which contains details of the email. Could have done it with nano, but instead I'm going to use cat and end of file. So we're signaling the start of the actual file and telling it to output this to email.txt. I've got a from line to say who the email's from, a to line to say who it goes to, then a subject, then a message, and then EUF to actually finish this off. And then that actually creates a text file. Now, one thing I'll point out is that for me, this line isn't relevant because ultimately this is going to go to Slack. So I don't really need to include that line, but your circumstances might be different, in which case I'm including that uh, for completeness in case you want to test this out with curl. So the actual curl command itself, well, we've got details of the URL. In other words, details of the actual server to connect to. So for me, mineralize.home lab.lan port 8025 which is the default we want to use the smtp protocol yes we want it encrypted but we don't want to use smtps we want to use smtp because we're using start tls we do want ssl so we're saying that ssl is required we're then telling it where the actual email is being sent from but we also need to actually send the actual uh, recipient details now i'm using slack and because I'm not using any domains within MailRise, the email message has to be sent to slack at mailrise.xyz. So mailrise.xyz is the default domain if you don't actually configure your own. I've then got another parameter to actually tell it to upload this text file we've created. And then I'm passing over the actual credentials for the user to actually connect with. So I'll just hit return. Off it goes, and there we go. We've now got our text message. So in which case, we've been able to send an email message from this computer over to MailRise, but we've had to log in and we've used encryption. That's then turned that into an alert and forwarded over to Slack. Now, if you find this video to be useful, then do consider subscribing to the channel, as that would really mean a lot to me. But it's also a good indicator to let me know how videos like this are helpful to people such as yourself that are watching. In which case, thank you. On the other hand, if you're not ready for that level of commitment, then I'd really appreciate it if you could press the like button. Because that way, that will help to get the video out to other people that might find it useful as well.